Hey guys, we recently made an epic film for the 48 hour film project and won four awards. So if you want to learn to make your own short film, then this video is for you. <laughs> Whether you're just shooting a short film with friends or uh, if you're a bit experienced, it's always important to assemble a good crew. Part of the crew, part of the ship. When we started out, we were just shooting films with friends and we had no idea what we were doing. Where does this thing go? Which could lead to endless discussions on set and take up all your valuable time. Markers! Markers! I got markers! A better way to do it is to learn what kind of roles there are on a professional set and try to fit everybody that's working on your film into one of those roles. We had a director, cameraman, also known as director of photography or cinematographer. We had a line producer, we had a sound recorder, gaffer, production coordinator, camera assistant, production system, and even a unit still photographer. That's right, baby. If you're a starting filmmaker, you might not have enough people to fill out all these roles. But don't worry, people can take on multiple roles. It's, it's not a problem. It's, uh, we've done it. So, uh, you can do it. It's fine. It's fine. Let's uh, continue. For instance, Alan is the director, but for a long time he was also the cameraman. As your team expands, people can shift into different roles. What is most important is that everybody knows their responsibilities. And that way, everybody uh, will have something important to do on set. Which makes the whole experience way more fun and rewarding in the end. You can find out more about the specifics of these responsibilities by just typing them into Google. But we will also be making videos in the future explaining all these di different roles individually and how we've grown into them. Gear! Camera department. We shot this bad boy on a Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro. Pretty cool camera. We used a variety of different lenses from different brands and most of the shots were simply done on a tripod or handheld. In some cases we used a very flimsy DIY dolly system, but since it was quite shaky, we didn't end up using it that much. Lighting department. We had two C-stands and two flags, one Kino Flow and a few redheads. What we basically did for most shots was using the flags to give some negative fill on one side of our actors, and then light them with the Kino Flow from the other side. Then we used the redheads to give a sharp backlight, creating a pretty standard three-point lighting scheme. For the outdoor shots, we only used the flags for negative film and let the sun do the rest. Actually making the film. Usually you don't shoot your script in chronological order, but you shoot them in the most efficient order for the production. For instance, our film goes from outside the gym to inside the gym to outside the gym and so on. If we had to move the entire crew inside and outside the whole time, we would lose a lot of time and on film sets, time is always your biggest enemy. <laughs> so we did all the outside scenes during the first half of the day, then we had a short break, and then forget lunch, that crew get hungry. And then afterward, we shot all the inside things till the end of the day. Shooting scenes! <laughs> Probably you want to shoot one scene at a time, letting the actors play out the entire scene from beginning to end every time you've lined up a shot. For example, we would line up a wide shot with all the actors in it and let them play out the scene. Then we'd move closer on Bob and Louie and let the entire scene play out again. When the director believes he has all the right takes, we do a reverse shot on Katie and then let the entire scene play out again. In general, this is the most common way to shoot a scene. It's easy on the actors because they can stay in character for a long time, it's easy on the crew because they only have to move or change lightning a few times and it's easy on the editor because he can choose whatever angle he wants. We plan to open this scene on a wide shot and let everything play out in medians but in the edit it didn't feel right. It was too straightforward. Instead our editors decided to move the wide shot till later in the scene using it as a punchline and an establishing shot at the same time which worked way better. Fuck's a ghost fighter! He's gonna fight Lloyd! As you! We couldn't have done this if we would have cut the wide shot after the beginning of the scene. So shooting scenes this way provides a lot of structure on set and gives you more creative freedom in the edit. In what order do you start recording a shot? Firstly, the director starts rehearsal with the actors. Locations can pose limits to your actors and the scene so rehearsal offers an opportunity to find out those limitations and work around them or make them work in your favor. 
You might have heard the term blocking the scene before. Well, there you go. Blocking of the house. Blocking is the precise position of actors during a scene. Markers are put at positions where actors will stand still, often end position. These markers show the actors where they should move to and stand in position. Then the actors skedaddle to make way for lights and camera. If possible, have other departments check makeup, clothes and stuff on set. It would be a shame to find out that some of the shots have some displaced items or crew gear visible on screen. Once everything has been set up, you are ready to film. So just shoot your scenes, just rinse and repeat all these steps and bah! You just made your own film. There you go. Good job me. Good job you. Good job me. You should probably subscribe now. More videos are coming. I'm leaving. And this is a bag of people.